Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, Jack the Ripper, twisted killers that have become household names all across the world. However, not all of the world's most vile criminals are nearly as infamous despite their shocking crimes. Here are some of the most twisted killers you may have never heard of. Number 1. Dr. Death Harold Shipman is considered to be one of the most prolific serial killers in modern history with an estimated 250 victims. Dr. Death, as he is sometimes known, worked as a general practitioner in the UK for decades. For his patients, Shipman setting up on his own was a deadly move. He was now away from the prying eyes of colleagues and was free to do exactly what he wanted. Between 1975 and 1988, Shipman murdered patients under his care. There were levels of uh, diamorphine in the body of the deceased, which were sufficient to have led to her death. Shipman's diabolical actions were discovered, and a colleague raised concerns about the unusually high death rate among his patients. They also noticed that most of the dead were elderly women who were found in their own homes, either sitting in an armchair or lying on their beds, fully clothed and seemingly comfortable unusual positions for most people to die. In light of these concerns, they did a bit of investigating themselves and discovered that in 1997 alone, 41 of Shipman's elderly patients had died at home and all of them had been cremated. More suspicions were raised by a local taxi driver who had dropped off many patients at hospital who seemed to be in good health but later died in Shipman's care. The heartless killer was eventually caught when he forged the will of one of his victims, leaving himself almost 400,000 pounds. Shipman's fingerprint appeared on the will, when in actual fact in interview, Shipman denied that he'd ever seen the will. An investigation was carried out that found Shipman guilty of 15 murders, although the real number was much higher. Unlike other serial killers, Shipman didn't appear to have a motive for his mass killing. His horrific crimes led to huge changes to standard medical procedures across the UK to ensure that this never happened again. Shipman's denied all of his crimes until his death in prison by suicide in 2004. The level of such that this woman actually died from the toxicity of morphine, not as you wrongly diagnosed. In plain speaking, you murdered her. No. Number 2. Hieronymus Cornelius In 1629, a Dutch trading ship called the Batavia was wrecked on a small island chain off the western coast of Australia. Approximately 300 of the passengers managed to make it to shore. Among them was a Dutch trader named Hieronymus Cornelius, who had been planning a mutiny on the ship before it even left the Netherlands. Cornelius was a bankrupt apothecary who was desperate to get as far away from the Dutch Republic as possible. The ship's commander left the surviving passengers and went to find help, leaving Cornelius in charge. The influential trader saw his opportunity, deciding to take control. The power-hungry Dutchman quickly sent away many of his potential rivals to die searching for water. Over the next few weeks, he ordered those loyal to him to carry out a massacre where they killed 125 of the survivors, including women, children, and infants. His aim was to establish a new country with himself as leader. He killed off all opposition and kept women as sex slaves during the weeks he was in charge. Cornelius ran his island nation with an iron fist, ordering the execution of anyone he disagreed with. It is likely that he attempted to lower the population in order to ensure that supplies lasted as long as possible. After the mutiny and after the uh, Pelsite returned to Batavia, everything was removed off the island. So the archaeology isn't on the surface, it's underground. And so we've had to use remote sensing to try to figure out where we're most likely to find sites. Cornelius's brief rule on the desert island nation came to an end when the captain returned with a rescue party. The population was liberated by the rescuers who tortured and executed Cornelius and his henchmen. Number 3. Los Pokinakis From 1950 to 1964, four sisters ran Rancho El Anel in the Mexican state of Guanajuato. The ranch was the center of a large prostitution ring run by the sisters as well as the site where they murdered around 100 people. Their recruitment method was simple. They would visit poor rural communities where they would find the prettiest girls and offer them work as maids or waitresses. In some cases, the sisters would simply kidnap women. When the young women became too ill, old or unattractive to customers, the sisters would simply kill them. Las Pokinakis, as they later became known, would use other women to recruit potential sex slaves as well as tempting them in with fake help wanted signs looking for housemaids before force feeding the girls heroin or cocaine 
forcing them into a life of prostitution. The women also killed customers who carried large amounts of cash. As police and press reporters explored the ranch, some of the girls pointed to places in the ground and told them that's where they would find the bodies. Some estimate they killed as many as 200 in total. The trial was a very chaotic affair, which resulted in the sisters being found guilty of at least 91 murders. The sisters were charged in 1964 and sentenced to 40 years each in prison for their horrific crimes. Number four, the Muswell Hill murderer. Dennis Nilsson is one of the UK's most infamous serial killers. And get blinding drunk, so I could face it, and start this section. Between 1978 and 1983, he killed 12 young men and boys while living in London. Originally from Scotland, Nilsson spent five bloody years luring young men into his home before strangling them to death. Nilsson would then bathe and dress the victims' bodies before storing them in his home for extended periods of time. He told how he liked to wash the bodies and keep them for company, sometimes talking to them and sleeping with them for weeks after the killing. Nilsson had discovered he was gay during puberty most of his victims were homosexual, homeless men that he was able to lure into his home with promises of sex or shelter. He also engaged in sexual acts with the corpses until they became too decomposed to continue. Nilsson then dissected his victims, flushing what pieces he could down the toilet and leaving other parts in a local park or over a fence behind his flat. I was called to 23 Crown of Guns because it was a block drain. The smell was unbelievable. It was explained to me that they had unblocked a drain and revealed what looked like uh, remains of um, a human body and, and some pieces of bone. His crimes were eventually discovered and he was sentenced to life imprisonment in 1983. Number five, H.H. H. Holmes. Herman Webster Mudgett, better known by his changed name, H.H. H. Holmes, was an American con artist and serial killer. A fashionable, bright, and likable man, Holmes uses looks and charisma to commit countless crimes throughout his criminal career. He enrolls as a medical student September 21 in 1882. College spawned a criminal fascination with the dead. Mudgett found that by digging up graves and selling bodies, he could pay for his tuition. He was found guilty of almost every crime you can think of, including insurance fraud, swindling, check forging, bigamy, horse theft, and of course, murder. Between 1891 and 1894, it is likely that Holmes killed at least nine people while claiming to have killed 27 when he was finally arrested. Many of Holmes' killings were related to money-making schemes. Holmes would produce enough dead policyholders to claim almost a quarter of a million dollars. However, what he's most famous for is for the hotel hell that he began constructing in 1887. It was in the hotel that Holmes carried out many of his criminal acts. It would be very easy to get lost in this place, especially if you're being hunted by someone who is familiar with it. Holmes was eventually caught after bones were discovered by police. On searching the hotel, they found a crematorium, surgical surfaces, and secret rooms. It was filled with passageways and trap doors and chutes and just the strangest rooms and all these different contraptions all somehow connected and ultimately led to the basement. The media went crazy giving his hotel its famous nickname. Holmes was executed on May 7, 1896. Had you heard of these ruthless killers? Please let us know in the comments if so and which killers you think should have made our list. Thanks for watching this episode of Crime 101. Be sure to subscribe for more.